Hello and welcome to Buddha and the Coach vlog powered by Soul Performance Academy. I am your host, Dan Mickle. The Buddha and the Coach is a weekly vlog focused on looking at the teachings of the Buddha in the coaching light. The Buddha and the Coach is proudly sponsored by It's Called Normal Athletics. ICN Athletics helps make the extraordinary ordinary through adaptive beach volleyball. Everyone should have the opportunity to enjoy and play in the sport, and ICN Athletics offers the programs and the educations to help make it normal for adaptive athletes to play on any court. Help them make beach volleyball courts a place for everybody. For more information or to make a donation to the 501c3, please visit icnathletics.com. Again, it's called Normal Athletics. Thanks to John and Dave and everyone there for their continued support. But more importantly, thanks for everything that they're doing to help with adaptive athletes and the sport of beach volleyball. <clears throat> All right, lesson number 28 from the Buddha. This week, the Buddha says, silence the angry man with love, silence the ill-natured man with kindness, silence the miser with generosity, and silence the liar with truth. What a great lesson for life in general. Um, but let's break it down and look at it from a coaching view. And before I do, I guess I should mention, I typically do not prep for this vlog. Um, I quickly cut and paste whatever the lesson's going to be from the book onto the screen for the graphic, but I really don't sit down and write this out or plan this ahead. So much of the time, the reaction that you're getting from me on these vlogs is first reads, first reactions, and instantly what my thoughts are. Um, I just feel that's a fun way to do it versus being overproduced and, and really grinding through. I want it to be that kind of, oh yeah, this is how it is, reaction. Um, so this one has a lot to break down, but my first thought is when we're in the coaching world, we tend to match what we're being given, whether it's what our players, our parents, our administration, or our opponents are giving. That's Tending, tends to be what we give back. Um, you know, a lot of times if teams are sarcastic, the coach becomes sarcastic. Or if the parents are upset, the coach is upset. Or if, you know, the administration is coming down hard, then the coach ends up coming down hard on the team. And I think we have to look at that mirror relationship and kind of break it a little bit. I think it's a great opportunity to find kind of flip the script script on it and and find new ways to reach. Um, and I'm actually going to work backwards with, with that last one. S silence the liar with truth. And I think that a lot of times we get into debates, whether it's with other coaches or with officials or even players on our team, and we just want to make noise. We just want to pit push back. And one distinction I want to make about where I'm going with this is silence the liar with truth. And the, what it means to me is we need to actually think about what we're presenting when we have these tough situations, when we have disagreements with players, when we have disagreement with officials. A lot of times we don't bring truth into that. And I'm not saying that we are lying. I'm not saying that we're trying to be nefarious with anything. I'm just saying a lot of times... We just don't bring the facts with us. We, we raise our voice and we point out what's wrong, but we actually just don't end up backing it up with, hey, these are the actual truth and facts of the matter. And I think that's where we have to be careful. A lot of times as coaches, we let the emotions run us. And when that happens, we also tend to think that most people that we're arguing with or even people that are supporting us and around us know where we're coming from. We just assume that they understand where our argument is. You're saying it's A, I'm saying it's B. You should understand why I'm saying it's B. We take a lot of assumption in that. And I think what we need to start doing as coaches a little bit more is just clarifying where we're coming from. And that can also become the component of active listening. You know, if we're having that debate with a player or another coach, instead of just jumping into our side, Take a book out of the active listening playbook and repeat, okay, I understand that you're saying this and this is where you're coming from, but here's where I'm coming from and why. And then we bring those facts with us. I think a lot of times we just quick to point out, well, you're wrong because this, and we don't bring those facts with us. Again, I think most of the time it's not out of being dishonest 
or having ill intent. I think it's just we assume that people know more than they do about where we're coming from or what we're doing, and we skip a key part of our argument, which is defining our stance and why. We just kind of jump into that. And and then as we continue to work backwards through these, silence the miser with generosity. You know, there there's a lot of times that as coaches that we can have an opponent that's angry, players that are angry, and instead of battling it back with that negative energy, how can we show them that we appreciate it? Because let's be honest, even if we have opponents that we don't typically like, um, you know, teams or programs that over history we have problems with, without them we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't have those games. We wouldn't have those matches. So we kind of need them regardless of what we think about them. So kill them with kindness, right? Just give them all your generosity. There are a lot of times, especially against programs that I've you know, historically had huge battles with or disagreements with even. And one of the things I'll do is I'll let them go ahead. You do the coin toss. I don't care. It's a small, you know, it means nothing, but to me that sets the tone of, look, we're going to play and whatever. I'm not going to sweat the little things and I'm going to be generous when I can. Now, in sports, there's not a lot of times that we can be generous. Um, you know, there have been times when in the middle of a match something weird has happened, whether there was a scoreboard outage or this loud noise when someone was going to serve, something that, you know didn't end the way I thought it would. Like I thought maybe it should be a replay or the end of the point and the other team doesn't get it. They end up awarding us the point. And I feel like it was kind of a cheap point. Um, so yeah, there are times we'll serve out of bounds. We'll do something on purpose just to get the ball back to them on their side because I feel like they deserved it. You know, they got penalized for no reason. Um, so there's times that I do that. Just these small little tokens. Again, I'm not saying you have to give them the game or anything, but are there things are there things that you can do in your game or what you're doing that really don't matter, that aren't going to really affect the outcome, but are kind of a nice little, you know, generosity. It could cool the level of everything and make make the game the focus and not the side stories and the anger and the, you know, rivalry. Again, rivalries are great. I have nothing against rivalries. It's just rivalries don't have to be nasty. They can be amazing rivalries that are just based on talent. Um, silence the ill-natured man with kindness. Same thing. You know, if a coach is coming up to you and just teeing off about things, hey, coach, I understand it. Sorry that you're in that position instead of fighting back like, oh, stop being a baby and and, you know, just deal with it. That's part of sports. You know, show a little kindness. It's probably going to end that situation. Um, we see it a lot with parent conversations. You know, a lot of times parents are very upset and heated and then they come up and we end up just either shutting them down like, no, I'm not going to talk to you right now because it's in the rule book or or we battle with them right away. And I think one of the first things that we can do is just acknowledge that most of the time, and it's not just parents, a lot of times it's players, it's officials, it's other coaches, sometimes they're angry or they come in hot just because they want to be recognized. Um, a lot of my experience has been that parents just want to be heard. They want to know that we're listening. They're not always looking for a result. They're not always looking to change. They just want to know that their voice is being heard. So sometimes that's a way that we can silence that. Silence the ill-natured man with kindness. Hey, I understand where you're coming from. You're upset about your daughter's playing time. I just, we can't talk about it now, but let's circle back on this tomorrow at practice or, you know, somewhere. Instead of just ignoring them or saying, it's in the rule book, you can't talk to me. Give them a little bit of kindness. And I think that'll go a long way. And then the last one, which is actually the first one in the place is, silence the angry man with love. And I really think about opposing coaches and my relationships I had with them. And, and most, I, very few, I don't have a good relationship with. And a lot of that comes from they're going through the same things. They're spending the long hours in the gym. They're away from their family. They're having the same struggles and, you know, the drama on teams as every other coach. And it gets heated in battle. But why do we have to carry that over? 
unless you feel that a coach is just blatantly cheating, blatantly trying to get one up on you, I don't see why there needs to be so much anger or hate towards another team. You may not like their coaching style. You may not like them personally. It's just maybe a, you know, a personality that you don't get along with. But you can still show them love. You can still say to them that they, you, I mean, I appreciate the time that you're putting into this sport. Or, man, that team's really improved. You're obviously spending a lot of time with them. It's okay. You can be foes and you can be opponents, but you can still show each other love. Because, man, I tell you, burnout is real. We've talked about it a million times on all my other podcasts and blogs and vlogs. But this is a great way to help. Just kind of help your peers. Help those that you're working against. Just show them a little bit of love. And same with players and parents. There's this circle that just isn't broken. Parents are upset at coaches. Coaches are upset at parents. It just goes on and on. And man, someone just stop and show some love. Like, hey, I understand you're passionate about your kid. Here's what I see. Here's what we can do. Communication helps that. But we've built all these walls. And we need to tear them down a little bit. Again, I know there needs to be that line, the, the parent line, the coach line, and there needs to be those lines. But that doesn't mean we still can't show parents love, that we can't show kids love. We can be tough on them, hold them accountable, hold them to high standards, but we're still allowed to care about them and we're still allowed to show we care about them. I feel like we lost that. I feel like we've become this factory almost of pushing players out. And then we see stories or social media posts of kids, you know, oh, I love my coach and my coach has done so much. And we celebrate that because they feel like it's an exception. And that shouldn't be the exception. That should be the normal. It shouldn't be news that a coach cares. It shouldn't be news that a coach's heart breaks when a player has a heartbreaking situation on the court or on the field or in the pool or on the track. That should be normal. We should be caring. And we lost sight of that. We're afraid to show emotion. And listen, those that know me and see me coach, they know that I've gone through this. I probably am still going through it and I'm coming out of it. I worked so hard to try and be neutral and be that that stone that no matter what highs and lows it's the same that I'm almost void of emotion and I'm working on that because emotion is a good thing showing you care is a good thing go above and beyond help them help the parents help the coaches help the officials look officials aren't out there to try and screw with teams I I okay Again, like anything else, I'm sure there's a few exceptions. But I'm sure most officials don't wake up and be like, oh man, I wonder how I can screw this team out of a win today. They're up there trying, and sometimes they just see it different. And we're allowed to have those disagreements. Oh man, I can't believe you called that. There's no way. That's great. But at the end of the day, it's still the performance of your team on the court, in the pool, on the field. It's not always the official. Sometimes... We just get so caught up in ourselves and our programs that we forget all the other parts. Without the officials, we don't have matches. Without opponents, we don't have matches. Without parents, we don't have matches. We don't have teams. They're all stakeholders. Everyone cares. It's okay to show them you care. It's okay to high-five a ref. It's okay to say hi to them. It's okay to sit down and talk and share and collaborate with your opponents and your coaches. I mean, you're not going to give away every secret you have or your game plan. But if you make your opponents better, they're going to make you better. But so many times we do the mirror effect. We match what we're given. Someone's angry at me, I'm going to be angry back at them. Someone's snarky at me, I'm going to be snarky back at them. I get that. I can be one of the most petty people you'll ever meet. I admit that, and I am working on that. But we need to do the reverse. Stop the mirror, do the reverse. Someone shows you hate, show them love. Someone shows you dishonesty, show them honesty. Someone's a miser, show them generosity. Don't be afraid to buck the trend and try and make things a little bit better. 
And I think that's what that lesson is. So lesson 20, I know we worked through it backwards, so let me say it forwards. Lesson 20 of the Buddha this week. Silence the angry man with love. Silence the ill-natured man with kindness. Silence the miser with generosity. And silence the liar with truth. I think this is a great lesson for us to ponder. For those of you that journal, I think this would be a great, great lesson to journal about. How do you stop the mirror of emotion and change it to the opposite? How do you take that negative and make it a positive? All right, everyone, that is it for this week. Buddha and the Coach Lesson 28. I am Dan Mickle, and as always, you can reach me across all social media at Real Dan Mickle. And don't forget to visit Soul Performance Academy, soulperformanceacademy.com, and you can reach them across all social media at 717 Soul. I look forward to next week's lesson. So, peace, much love, don't suck, and remember one day one. It's either one day or day one, it's your choice. See you all next week. 